All right, folks, with the DLC launching in less than a month here, I figured it'd be a good idea to make a guide showing how to reach Moog as early as possible. First thing you're going to want to do as soon as you get into Limgrave is come over here and talk to this sassy bastard. This is White Mask Vare, and he is going to be your key to reaching Moogwin Palace way before you're actually ready to be there. So, talk to him, and then we're going to take a little detour to get some things ready that will help out later in this whole process. So, from the gate, we are going to head down to the Church of America, where you can get your physic flask thing, and also access a teleporter that's going to take us to uh, the Dragon Barrow, which will come in handy later. So run through here, pick up the physic, then run behind the church, and teleport out to Grail's Dragon Barrow. Uh, activate the bonfire inside, and then we are just going to leave here and head south to a fortress where you can pick up a medallion half that you need, get Radagon's sore seal, and also, I hate to say it, but kill this dragon for a massive amount of runes that are going to be helpful later on. So, rest at this grace. We're going to be right here on the map if you need it. And then head inside and just follow the path I'm taking here to get both the medallion half and the source seal. Now the seal is by no means necessary, but it does give a bunch of really nice little stat boosts that can be very helpful for certain builds, depending on what you're going for. This one is specifically a lot of the physical skills. Attributes. Whatever. Uh, come down here, drop down here, and the source seal is right behind this wall. As far as getting out is concerned, just backtrack or, you know, just be really slow on the ladder. Either way, you'll end up right back at that grace. Now. If you are going to try to kill Grail, the giant dragon that's there, you're going to want a bleed weapon. And you can go to this merchant right on the map, just north of the fortress, to pick up these spiked gauntlets, or uh, spiked cestuses. What you're going to do with these is just proceed to spend the next, I want to say about eight minutes of your life, just repeatedly punching this dragon in the thigh. And eventually, the bleed damage will build up enough that it takes her out without you having to actually engage in any kind of real combat with anything. <laughs> it's a long process, but the souls that you get from it are well worth it and let you set up a pretty strong build nice and early in whatever fashion you want. So again, you can skip this entire step if you don't want to be leveled up for this next part, but it helps. Another little extra thing you can do is to go just south of that original grace that we sat at in the Dragon Barrows to this bridge. Make sure you are there at night. This night cavalry will spawn. You can come up on this route, let him fall off the cliff, and you get even more runes and the still fairly overpowered bloodhound step skill. Okay, so from there, go back to Limgrave, and we are going to be heading south to Fort Height. Height? Height? Whatever it is. Uh, and going up top to get the other half of that medallion. This will let us use the uh, lift up to Altus Plateau, which makes things simpler. It isn't entirely necessary, but it definitely makes things a lot easier later on. There are uh, other ways of getting up there if you need them, though. This is just the the fastest way to do it. Uh, so kill this guy, get the skill he drops. You won't need it for this process, but it's one more to have in the collection. And then head up this ladder to get the other half of your medallion. 
and then leave in whatever way you see fit to go and fight your first demigod. First though, we have to get through Margit, which at this level, if you went ahead and got those runes, really should not be much of a problem at all, but feel free to use whatever cheap tactics you need to to get through them. The fight is a good introduction to skills that you'll need all throughout this game, some of which come back in the fight with Moog, but uh, I mean, he's, he's definitely the first roadblock on this path, so just do whatever you need to to get through him. And once the fight's over, we are going to continue on to Godric, the actual first demigod that you're going to fight. So, once again, bring whatever cheap tactics you need. Uh, bleed works really well against this entire game, so, uh, you know, if you got those Cestuses earlier, maybe upgrade them a little and just bleed them to death. Otherwise, bring in something to summon, Spirit Ash, whatever. No one's judging you at this point. Get through both his phases, bring him down, collect your reward, and then it is on to the tower that is right in Stormwind Castle to activate the great rune that you get from him. Once you have that activated, go back to Roundtable Keep. Talk to the talk to the two fingers, but technically talk to the hag that's speaking for them. And then go back to find Vare at the first step again, only to find that he has left. So, from here on out, you're going to find him out in Lyurnia, in this blood chapel that's out here. He's just hanging against the wall waiting for you. And he is going to put you on the path to joining his ranks. Uh, when he asks, just say that the two fingers didn't seem quite right, and he will see that there's potential in you to become one of his awful little underlings. And then he gives you some PvP items and tells you to go off and fight people online. Three of them, specifically. Now, all you have to do is fight them. You don't have to win. So just use up three of these items, get into three fights, die three times if that's how it goes and then come back to him and he'll have your next step there there is an alternative to doing that however um, which helps out especially if you're playing offline there is actually an NPC that you can go fight up in Altus Plateau which is why we got those medallion halves who you can go and fight instead um, <laughs> He's a bit of a tough fight, because he uses beast uh, beast spells and a big bleed weapon. But I will show you where to find him in just a moment here. Um, once you have either him defeated or your three online opponents met, not necessarily defeated, but at least encountered, you can come back to him and he will give you this fancy piece of cloth that you have to drench in the blood of a maiden. And we'll come back to that in just a minute, because... Once again, there's multiple ways to go about doing it. So as far as that NPC that you can fight instead, go to Altus Plateau, to the Wraithblood Ruins right here on the map, and you will find this little red sign that you can invade so long as you held on to some of those uh, invasion items. Go in, fight him, don't die like I'm about to here, and you'll get both his weapon, and that requirement will be fulfilled. Uh, next, we are going to go up here to this chapel, which it's going to be a lot easier to reach if you go through the whole process of fighting off the giant burning madness eye that's sitting down on a tower, but... Um, it's not wholly necessary. Uh, when you come up here, you will get invaded by this guy, Vike, who, for a bunch of lore reasons, is hanging out here with his dead finger maiden. 
You can draw your own conclusions on that. Um, but you can use this finger maiden to fulfill the requirement for a maiden's blood on the cloth. Or you can go the significant, bleh, significantly more evil route of coming down to the Weeping Peninsula here. And meeting up with this lady. Only to then brutally slaughter her. And dip the note in her blood. I wouldn't suggest that one, but, you know, it's up to you. The other way is a lot easier, this way is a lot faster. Either way, you're going to bring that note covered in blood back to Vare, and he is going to do some things to your hand. They're not particularly pleasant things. It appears as though he's injecting tainted blood under your fingernail and it's real discomforting to actually think about what's technically happening here but at the same time you don't have to think about it so uh yeah just bring that back to him he'll do his thing with uh, this invisible needle you will um then have a a PvP item that you can constantly reuse. Oh, your teeth or and then if you talk to him again, he will give you this lovely badge of the Moguin Dynasty that he says not to use until a later point because uh, the Dynasty is not quite prepared yet. And there's no reason for you to be there yet. Uh, you're going to use it immediately, right in front of him, preferably, just to spite him. And that will take you to Mogwin Palace, the region, at least. There's still going to be a little bit of travel and traversal involved in actually reaching Mog himself. But once you're here, you have some options at your disposal, including what is probably one of the best rune farming spots in the entire game. So come here, get the map, come up to this grace and light it, and then you are going to go one of two ways, either to the right up to Moog himself, which is his own journey, right up those stairs, or you can go to the left and unlock another grace which will give you that rune farming spot I was talking about. Come down here through this horrible blood swamp. Uh, you can if you're more proficient at life than I am. Uh, go ahead and get that scarab that was down there. Light this grace. And right off to the side you're going to see a giant bird that you can shoot with an arrow to uh, get just a massive amount of runes over and over again. Otherwise, in order to get up to Moog, you are going to go up those steps I showed earlier, follow this path, jump around this thing, don't worry about that, and go into this incredibly dark cave temple situation here. Um, while you are in here, certain enemies are going to spawn and chase you, but as long as you keep moving you'll be totally fine. They won't have any chance of catching up with you. There's some very high level items that you can pick up on the floor in here. Come out here. Ignore the fact that you can invade Vare right here. We'll, there will be a time for that later, but not right now. Light this grace and come right over here to find the lift that is going to take you up to Moog. Also a bunch of Mogwin followers who, uh, will mess you up pretty fast at this level. But that's about all there is to it. You now have your path to Moog, and uh, are kind of on your own as far as BDM is concerned. Have fun with that, and best of luck with the DLC when it comes out.